Hey there, welcome back. So today's video isn't super glamorous. We're gonna be taking a look at how to create a game manager object, and we're gonna reroute a lot of the functions that we put in the grid and the top UI. We're gonna reroute a lot of that to the game manager so that things are a bit more centralized and easier to debug. So let's get started. Getting right into it, today we're gonna to be talking about adding a game manager object to our game and making sure that every object is only taking care of what it needs to take care of. Now, this is something that we can spend a lot of time on because while I did do an okay job of creating a kind of a basic uh, framework for this, there's a lot of stuff that I could have done better. Um, so again, if you are out there, and you feel like there's some stuff I could have done better, feel free to point it out and, uh, and I'll take a look at it. But for now, we're going to be looking at the game manager. Today, specifically, we're going to be using that game manager to set our board size and also to monitor the score variables. So the first thing I want to do here is go to my game window. I'm going to add a new child node, and this is going to be just a plain old node. And I'm going to call this the game manager. The game manager is going to be the very, very first child of the game window. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want its ready function to be the very first one called. Um, Godot will call the, uh, the ready functions in order. So for example, since game window is the root of this scene, its ready gets called first if it had one. It doesn't in this case. Then game manager's ready gets called before cameras, which gets called before the canvas layers. And then the canvas layers background gets called before anything else. So it kind of does that top to bottom thing when it's calling the ready functions. And you need to make sure that you're at least aware that that's how it happens so that you don't have any weird script execution errors. Um, all right, so for my game manager, I'm gonna make a new script here. And I'm gonna put this in my scripts folder. And game manager is a perfectly fine name for it. Let's create. So what I want my game manager to do is keep track of things that um, are general to the game itself that don't necessarily belong in any one node but belong in probably a more centralized place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the width and height of the board here. You don't need to. It would make sense for that to be with the grid but I kind of like keeping it here um, since this is where we're going to be editing a few other things too. So I'm going to add my uh, export of type integer for the width and an export of type integer for the height. Um, so that's my board variables here, or at least the beginning of them. I also want to keep track of some stuff about the level. So we'll call these level variables. So I want to keep track of which level this currently is. So export of type integer var level. Uh, I want to keep track of what kind of level it is. So if it's moves or if it's a timer, which currently we're keeping track of that in the grid script and it shouldn't be in the grid script. The grid should just keep track of grid stuff. Uh, and then let's also keep track of whatever the max number of counters we have, whether that's seconds or moves. So export of type bool var, um, nope, sorry, this isn't a pool, this is an integer, max counter. Let's also have this keep track of what our current counter value is. So var current counter. Okay, um, now let's talk about score stuff. Score should probably be in the game manager as well, or in its own score manager object, but might as well have it in the game manager. So this is going to be score variables. So we want this to keep track of the high score. So var current high score. We want this to keep track of the current score. Current score. We want it to keep track of the max score allowed on this level. Var max. Actually, this should be an export of type integer max score. Let's see. This should also keep track of how many points each piece is worth. So export of type integer var 
points per piece. And then we need a few signals. So first we need to send a signal to the grid to tell it what its dimensions are. So signal set dimensions. Uh, we need to send a signal to the top UI about what the score information should be, the max score, so that the bar knows what its max value is. So signal set score info. And we also need to set that counter info, set counter info. I think that's good for now. Uh, I'm going to make a specific function to do our setup stuff. So function setup. And this is going to do things like emit those signals, check for the high score, um, set the current score, all that good stuff. So we're going to say our current score is equal to zero to start. And here's where we should be checking about the high score. So we're going to check the game data manager. So if game data manager dot level info dot has, we want to make sure it has our current level as a key. If it doesn't, we'll skip the next part. And then if game data manager dot. So not only it does it have this level as a key, but does it have a high score in that key? So level info level dot has and we're looking for the high score. Then we're going to say that our current high score is equal to that information. Current high score is equal to game data manager dot level info level high score. All right, cool. So let me just comment this stuff out so that everybody understands where I'm at as we were going down. So we're going to set the score to zero to start. Check for an existing high score and store in memory. All right, cool. So after we do that, we want to send some information to the uh, top UI about the score. So we're going to emit signal set score info, which is going to set information about the score. We want to send out the max score, no max score. And we want to send out the current score. Okay, cool. Um, I also want to emit a signal to tell the board what size to have. So we'll call this set dimensions and we'll send out the width and the height. Cool. All right, so let's save that. Now, let's go take a look at how we can clean up our other things in here. So if I go out of here, I want to go to my game manager. Now, one thing that Godot does is even though it puts values in here to start, it considers these values to be empty. So it doesn't consider this to be a zero. It considers it to be empty until you actually type a value in here. So for my width, I'm going to say my width is 8. My height is 10. Let's say this is something I know we don't have a key for, like say level 12. Um, I'll make this a moves board and maximum number of moves is going to be something unique like 37. I'm going to say the max score is something relatively small like 1000. And we'll say there's 20 points per piece. All right, now I want to go to my node. I'm going to connect my set dimensions with the grid. I'm not done yet, though. I'm going to connect my set counter info with the top UI. Still not done. And I'm going to connect set score info with the top UI. All right, so now let's take a look at the top UI first here. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that's happening in here that this shouldn't, the top UI shouldn't be keeping track of a lot of this stuff. Um, so for example, it shouldn't be keeping track of the current level, the current score. Uh, so I'm just going to comment these out when I see them. So I'm not just dis like destructively taking something away that I know worked. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of the current score. 
We need to get rid of on grid update score. And this whole function is broken, so I'm going to use three quotation marks to comment it out. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of this. Well, let's change this to suit our needs. So scorebar.value, <laughs> no, we can just get rid of this altogether. So I'm just going to uh, comment this out as well. All right, cool. Now for my game manager set score info, I have it set so that it's sending two pieces of information, the max score and the current score. So I'm going to call those new max and new current. And what I'm going to do down here is I'm just going to change the counters max, or not the counter, the score bars max and current values and then the score label to reflect this. So one thing I'm going to do is it's going to have an error and I'll explain what that error is in just a second. But I'm going to say that my score bar dot max value is equal to the new max and score bar dot value is equal to new current. And then I want to do the score label dot text is equal to the string version of the new current. All right, I'm going to save that. Now, there's going to be an issue with this. And some of you might already see what that issue is, but I should get an error when I hit play. Oh, hey. No, I didn't get an error, but uh, it didn't work the way that I wanted it to. And the reason it didn't is because the ready function on the game manager gets called before the ready function on the top UI. And the top UI is setting uh, score label, counter label, score bar. These are all in the ready function. That's why it's on ready var, because it's done as part of the ready function. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that they actually exist. So I'm going to do a quick little check here. So I'm going to say if not score bar, meaning if that hasn't been assigned yet, then score bar is equal to dollar sign, all of that to the texture progress. I'm going to do the same thing for the score label. So if not score label, score label is equal to dollar sign, score label. All right, cool. So if I save this, uh, it should be better this time. Nope, still zero, zero, zero. Interesting. Hmm. What if I change this to just be like 500? Yeah, no, that's what I thought. Okay. None certain what I did wrong here, but there's a few things we need to fix right now anyway, so let's fix them right now. So let's go to our grid script, um, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. So in our grid script, I want to get rid of a few things I don't need. So I don't need this anymore. I commented that out last time, and I know for a fact it works without it, so I'll get rid of it. If I take a look here at my scoring values, I'm going to leave my update score signal but I'm going to get rid of the max score signal. I'm going to get rid of the max score, the piece value, and I'm going to leave the streak. And this is going to break a few things. So if I just kind of scroll down here, I can find things that it's broken. And I'm just going to comment them out as I go. So there's one. Uh, the next one should be in the destroy matched method. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so it's emitting the piece value times streak. I just want it to emit the signal with the streak. We're going to leave that as it is otherwise. Um, I think that might be the last part that's broken right now. But I want to make sure. All right, cool. So, oh yeah, also the game maker set dimensions 
game manager set dimensions. So this is going to be new width, new height, and then I'm just going to change the width and height to be that. So width equals new width, and height equals new height. I'm also going to go all the way back up here to my board variables, and I'm going to take those the width and the height, I'm going to make them not exports anymore. They're just regular old variants now, because the game manager is going to be controlling that. All right, so if I save this, let's go out of here. Let's make sure I didn't break anything just yet. Nope, I did. Do, do, do. Uh, did I not emit the signal from the game manager? Oh, it's because I never, that's why all this wasn't working. Anybody out there who saw that, that I never actually called setup, um, you're probably screaming at your devices. There we go. That's probably why things weren't working like they were supposed to. There we go. It's fixed now. So we've got a width of 8 by 10, and we've got our score all set up. Now, uh, what I want to do, the grid is currently telling the top UI to change the score in its update score thing here. I'm going to disconnect it from the top UI, and I'm going to reconnect it to the game manager. And then the game manager, uh, this is going to take in a streak value, is going to change whatever the current score is. So current score plus equals the streak value times the points per piece. And then it's going to uh, emit the signal to set the score info. Set score info, the max score stays the same, and the current score is also the other thing we're sending out. All right, so let's save that. Um, in my game manager, I'm going to set my piece value to something it wasn't at before, something weird like say 15. And let's hit play and let's check this out. So if I make a match, there we go, 45. Cool. So now we're routing all of our score information through the game manager instead of routing it all through the grid, which makes things actually a lot better. Let's take a look at our top UI script here really quickly because uh, there's some stuff we can get rid of now. So we can get rid of that update score bar. We can get rid of the on grid update score. We can get rid of this in the ready. We're going to end up getting rid of that notify of level too. That's, we're coming for you. Um, so yeah, it's a bit simpler than what it was and it makes more sense in my opinion for it all to be running through the game manager because the grid doesn't need to know anything about the score. The grid doesn't even need to know how much each piece is worth. This way you can have like some levels where the pieces are worth a different score or something like that. Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description down below. You can follow me on discord or Twitter to find out when new videos are posted. Um, couple shout outs here really quickly. Uh, first, uh, Pig Dev is doing some really, really good Godot videos, uh, especially if you are unfamiliar with things like patterns of development. I would really suggest checking out his videos. He does a really good job. He does a lot of work with Nathan Lovato, who is GD Quest, who is also really awesome. I'll put links to both of them in the description. Uh, shout out to the mods on my Discord channel, Faker and Sir Psycho. Yeah, they're amazing people. And thank you to all my patrons. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, feel free to give me a like, uh, subscribe. If you do so, it won't necessarily, I mean, it'll help me, but it'll also tell YouTube that you like this kind of content and start showing you more content like this. So, uh, yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.